Hello everyone, my name is Melissa Reyna and I'd like to share a little about myself. I have retinopathy of prematurity, I am legally blind, and I do have some vision. Some years back, I went and got an electrical engineering degree in technology and most recently culinary arts as a pastry chef. I used to have my own business called the Brownie Bowl. I made gourmet brownies and most of my customer base was corporate. I was in business for about eight years and up until two years ago when the pandemic hit, I was doing great. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to recover after that. Baking will always be a love of mine and I will always enjoy doing it. But now I'm into something a little more active, skating. I've only been skating for a short amount of time, but let me tell you when I say this, I love it. I've enjoyed it so much that I wanted to share my love of skating with other blind and vision impaired people. So I started a nonprofit called Sensibility Skate. This is going to allow me to have programs to be able to teach other blind and vision impaired people how to skate. In fact, we're holding our very first summer class session as we speak. And now let's get cooking without looking. Today I'm going to be preparing homemade Belgian waffles. I've added the following ingredients to a large bowl. Two and one fourth cups of all-purpose flour. Three tablespoons of sugar. One tablespoon of baking powder. One teaspoon of cinnamon. And a half a teaspoon of salt. For the liquid ingredients, I've already separated and pre-measured everything. The recipe calls for two cups of milk, but I have two and a half cups of milk, one half cup of vegetable oil, and two eggs separated in bowls, one with egg yolks and one with egg whites. I use a whisk to slowly incorporate all of the dry ingredients into the bowl. I like to take my time doing this so that the cinnamon, sugar, and salt can all incorporate with the baking powder and the flour. I like to start from the center and slowly work my way around the outer edges of the bowl. I like to use a technique where I use my wrist and slowly turn the whisk instead of bringing the whisk out and around. So I will literally hold the whisk in one hand and use my wrist and just turn the whisk in place. Next, I have a metal bowl with a hand mixer and two beaters inserted into the mixer. I'm using a clean and dry metal bowl and I'm pouring the egg whites into the bowl. Make sure that your bowl is clean and dry and oil free. When I say oil free, I mean try not to put your fingers inside of the bowl at all. Another tip is to use a little bit of lemon juice, just a small splash and I mean very little. This is going to stop the egg whites from granulating and turning grainy if you over whip. So this is just a side tip. Now it's time to get whipping. So I'm going to slowly start my hand mixer at the lowest speed and I'm going to tilt the bowl using the rings on the side of my metal bowl. I'm doing this because I don't want my hands to warm up the bowl from the transfer of heat. So I like grabbing onto the small little rings that are on either side of my mixing bowl. So I'm gonna turn the speed on the lowest setting and I'm going to start mixing. This is the time that I locate my rings and I tilt the bowl to get all of the egg whites and lemon juice on one side of the bowl. I keep the bowl tilted and I am going to start mixing now. To save time and everyone's hearing, I've lowered the volume of the mixer and I'm also going to speed up this portion of the process. At this point in the process, I stop to check for consistency. 
I can tell that it is very liquidy and frothy. So I'm going to continue mixing. And I've also sped up the video for this particular part of the recording to save on time. I slowly pull up some of the egg whites to see what the consistency is and they are at soft peaks. What we're looking for is stiff peaks. So I'm going to continue to keep mixing as well as speed up the recording. I use my hand mixer beaters while they're turned off and pull up some egg yolks again. I see that they're stiffer but not as stiff as I need them to be for this particular recipe. So I'm going to continue at a slightly higher speed but for a short amount of time. Finally, this is the consistency that I'm looking for. When you pull up the beaters, the egg whites should stick. Also, another trick is to scrape down the sides of the bowl with a spatula and turn the bowl upside down. Yes, turn the bowl upside down. If the egg whites stay in the bowl, you have gotten to the consistency that you are needing, which is stiff peak. So now that you've gotten to the consistency that you need, it's time now to combine the wet and dry ingredients together. And then we're going to slowly fold in our egg whites before we get started with the waffle iron. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to start with the dry ingredients in the bowl and use the back of the spoon to create a well in the middle of the dry ingredients. So you're creating a small hole by pushing out the edges of the dry mixture towards the outer edge of the bowl to create a small little well. Next, I'm going to slowly pour in the vegetable oil Next, I'm going to add the egg yolks in the center of the well. Then I'm going to add the milk, just about half a cup at a time. So I'm going to slowly incorporate the wet ingredients with the dry ingredients. I'm going to also speed up this portion of the recording to save on time. Here is where I'm going to add some more milk and then carefully combine that with the mixture that's already in the bowl. I sped that recording up as well so I can add some more milk at this very moment and keep mixing. At this point, I stop because I can tell that I need more milk. So I'm going to go ahead and add the last of the two cup measurements that I had. You're probably wondering at the beginning of the video why I had two and a half cups. It just varies depending on the temperature that's in your home and the type of flour that you use. Sometimes you may need a little less milk and sometimes you need a little more and sometimes it's right on the money right where the recipe calls for so it just depends i like to be safe and add a little more at the beginning as far as in my measuring cup so that i can slowly pour as i need now that i've gotten the consistency that i'm looking for from the wet and dry ingredients i'm going to take the whisk out and I'm going to actually transfer this mixture into a larger metal bowl. So to do this, I'm going to lift up the bowl and replace it with a metal bowl. I'm going to pour all of the mixture that we just whisked up <laughs> all together. Once I do that, I am then going to add the egg whites and I'll show you here in just a second. 
I want to make sure I get all of the egg whites out of the bowl and carefully drop them into the batter. Now I'm going to grab the bowl with the batter and egg whites and tilt it slightly towards me so that it's at an angle and I'm able to easily cut into the egg whites, slowly folding them into the batter. When you're folding an ingredient into another, you're going to be incorporating air. Do not skip out on this step. It is very important. In fact, it's just as important as using stiff peak egg whites. You need air when you're using a Belgian waffle maker because it works differently from a regular waffle maker. I'm going to speed the recording up just for a few seconds. I've taken the time to fold in my egg whites and I have come to the consistency that I am looking for from my batter. It's finally time to get that waffle iron out and start preheating. Just use what's recommended by the manufacturer for this step. I've opened the waffle maker and I'm going to spray a little bit of nonstick cooking spray to both sides of the irons. Follow your instruction manual for the next step. This way you'll know how much batter to pour into your waffle maker. I'm slowly pouring the batter into the center of the bottom of the waffle iron. The batter is going to slowly start to spread out and expand. This is when you have time to add in ingredients if you want or leave them plain. Before I close the waffle iron up, I actually like to add different things to my waffles. For instance, here I've broken up some Oreo cookies and I'm sprinkling that into the batter. I also have prepared other little ramkin bowls on the side for different mix-ins, such as fruity pebbles, fruit, and um, other things like chopped nuts. So I always have that on hand and ready to go when I'm making waffles. I'm closing the waffle iron and I'm going to manually flip it and I will show you the finished product. I also decided to make waffles with Fruity Pebbles in the mix and this is what's showing up now. Remember, you can make more than you need and whatever you don't eat, you can always freeze and enjoy later. I wanted to go over a few of the items that I use in the kitchen to help me cook and bake. Um, I do have low vision, so some of these items may not be useful to those that are totally blind, uh, but more than not, I do have items that are useful. Um, so I'm gonna go through those really quickly. First things first, lighting is very important. As you can see, it's um, pretty dark. The only overhead lighting I have is a fluorescent light in my kitchen. I live in an apartment, so the, there's no lighting underneath my cabinets. So I installed my own and they're pretty much on rechargeable batteries. There's no wiring needed. I just stuck the lighting up there, but it gives me a good amount of lighting compared to what I had before. So in saying that, I'm going to show you the measuring cups I use are just glass, um, you know, measuring cups, pretty durable. So I, I've been using these for over 20 years um, of in basics and the contrast is pretty reasonable for me. They're large. It's large enough print that I can see it if I get close enough to it. This particular item is amazing. Um, I haven't had it that long. It is a talking measuring cup. It not only measures solids um, or volume, it measures, you know, liquids as well. I, I do like that feature. And also there is a tear button which clears. So let's just say if I wanted to measure flour, I can measure it by ounces or I can also measure it by grams. Um, after I've done that, I can hit the tear button and then go ahead and add sugar, for instance, in the same container without emptying it, and it will only measure out what I'm pouring as far as the sugar goes. So you don't always have to empty out every time you measure one item. It's just knowing how to use the tools that you have. Hello. It does talk. This is for volume. So it just changes uh, the, you know, the measurement scale. This is weight, and of course, 
this is, you know, the button, oh. the button you're going to hit for soluble. So again, it is amazing. Um, I don't really have anything to put in it at the moment, but I guess I can put some water in it, right? Goodbye. So let me go ahead and clear that and then turn it back on. Hello. Okay. Now I'm going to wait for the scale to let me know that it's ready. Scale ready. Okay. Zero. Out. So now it's at zero. I'm going to pour a little water in. All right. I poured the water in. I did turn the sound off. Oil. So. Milk. Flour. Sugar, ladder. There we go. Three, four, cup. And it's pretty accurate. Um, it's not bad at all. Like I said, it's it's one of those items that you really want to invest in um, if you aren't able to see that well or at all. Um, I can leave that information with Renee. Also, I have. You know a food thermometer uh so 74 point eight degrees fahrenheit so of course we all have these um that you know those of us that do a lot of cooking it's a, a meat thermometer but you know you can use it for boiling water as well it's not a candy thermometer so you can't use this thermometer for the same thing as far as candy thermometers go all right the next item i have are these collapsible measuring cups made by Imperial Sugar. Just a quick um, tidbit, I'm gonna say. The professor that instructed me in culinary arts, um, baking and pastry school, he is the uh, one of the ambassadors for Imperial Sugar. So all of the recipes that you see on the back of the Imperial Sugar bags are his recipes. And uh, this particular, set of measuring cups are collapsible so they collapse down to be flat so to save you space they also are color you know identifiable so you know your larger your largest one is red the next one is purple and so on and so on the other cool thing i like about these measuring cups not only are they color identifiable so if you remember your one cup would be red if you have vision if you don't have vision you can feel the one it's tactile so it's raised up and it's on the silicone cup so you can feel it as well as see the colors um, imperial sugar did an amazing job at creating these not really even thinking about them being accessible for the blind and vision impaired but when i brought it to my instructor's attention he just he was really amazed that that didn't even cross anyone's mind at the time I also have measuring spoons that are color identifiable. So for the one fourth teaspoon, I have the um, yellow and so on. And, you know, it just goes on to the major measurements ending with a one tablespoon, which is blue. So I use these all the time when I'm baking. They don't have braille, but you can easily put little braille labels on this if you chose to or you can go with the metal ones that a lot of people use that also have the tactile numbers on them. So going on to the other part of my kitchen, I have this new air fryer. This air fryer is amazing for two reasons. It is um, connected to my Echo device and all of you know her name, so I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> so I can literally control this particular air fryer with my voice the other amazing thing is this air fryer is dual heated it heats at the top as well as the bottom so for those of you who are obsessed with air fryers and have low to no vision this is the one you want to get you do not have to flip your food halfway anymore this air fryer does it for you and it is a 6.8 quart. I used to have one that was 5.7. I also have it on a heat resistant mat that slides out easily away from the wall. Um, so I absolutely love this. I can literally, 
you know say her name which i will do here and then i will try to mute it so that your speakers won't go off and be all crazy so i'm going to start now set kasori air fryer to air fry at 380 degrees for one minute air fry for one minute at 380 degrees and the last little gadget that i have is not so little but it is something i use every single day multiple times a day it is my microwave this microwave is special because it is also connected to my echo speaker so yes i can control the microwave with the sound of my voice and everyone knows how that is the best feature of all when you're low vision or no vision this microwave also has an additional braille overlay that you can request unfortunately um, when saying that i meant uh, that i could request they no longer have this particular um, brand or model of microwaves on amazon i don't know why they stopped making them um, from my understanding a lot of the users were having a difficult time with the uh, microwave working properly because it also has an air fryer and an oven feature on it so i'm not sure if any of those were giving people trouble because i only use the microwave portion of it i have used the baking portion of it probably two years ago when i was baking something and i needed more than my kitchen stove and oven to cook and bake so i did use this once for baking <laughs> It worked out really well. There is a fan in there. There's a convection. Um, there's also the heating element that's in there for baking, um, not just the microwavable portion of it. So I'm gonna show you quickly, this is um, how it works. Not only can you use it by saying A's name and then giving the command, you can also press this button that is called Ask Alexa. When you do that, um, you can literally command um, the speaker to do voice controls without saying her name so i kind of like that feature because i don't always feel like saying her name every single day multiple times a day um, i'm going to press it now and let her you know do the work microwave for 30 seconds um, so yeah, if you definitely are a fan of talking microwaves, this would have been the ideal microwave to get if they were still available. Unfortunately, they are not. Um, also, I can use my voice to give it specific commands. For instance, if you're microwaving a bag of popcorn and you know the weight of that bag of popcorn, it's very crucial to let her know the weight as well as what you're wanting to microwave that way the times are very specific so i'm going to press the ask alexa button and also give her a command for the popcorn microwave 3.2 ounces of popcorn and that's how i use my microwave i'm going to press the stop button or cancel button twice just to clear it out and these are some of the uh, items and things that I use in the kitchen to make my kitchen more accessible and easy for me to function and be efficient in. This brings me to the end of my video segment. I want to thank you all for taking the time to view my video. And I hope that the instructions were very helpful as far as descriptive enough for you to follow along easily. Once again, thank you Cooking Without Looking for allowing me to pre-record this video and to edit it to the best of my abilities so that your viewers are able to follow along.